Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at a newly updated Switch OLED compatible version of one of the most unique accessories for the Nintendo Switch, and that's the Fixture S2 from Fixture Gaming. And real quick, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date on everything happening with the channel. And with that out of the way, let's take a look at the latest and greatest version of the Fixture. So full disclosure, Fixture Gaming sent me this Fixture S2 Founders Edition for free, but all opinions of it are my own. And I've reviewed the previous versions of the Fixture as well, the Fixture S1, both the early 3D printed prototype build, as well as the final production unit. So honestly, I don't think there's going to be a ton that's changed here with the S2, aside from a few tweaks and slightly wider rails to accommodate the wider Switch OLED tablet. I'll leave a link to those previous videos down in the description in case you want to check those out in a little more detail, since this will probably end up being a bit of a shorter review. All right, and with all that out of the way, Let's take a look at the S2 here, the Founders Edition model. Now, one thing that surprised me right when I opened this up that I was not expecting at all, and it's pretty cool, is they went ahead and I guess when you were picking up the Founders Edition or, or pre-ordering it or whatever, you have the option of adding some custom branding to it. You know, you could add your gamer tag or some custom design or whatever. I was not aware they were going to do this, but it's super cool. They've added this artwork of me from my friend Sega Octopus. I'll leave a link to her Instagram account down below as well. She does some cool commission pieces if you're looking for something like that. And she did this cool Nintendo Power designed logo there with my slight alteration. So that's super cool. This won't be something that's a part of the final production units of the S2, I don't believe. So I do feel lucky to have this kind of like special edition here. And I did chat with the founder of Fixture, Austin Stark, a little bit when he was sending this to me. And apparently there will be some slight changes to the final production unit. He mentioned that the pads on the interior here will be slightly thinner on the final model. So that should make sliding the Switch tablet in and out a little easier. And and the final production unit will also have white accents to sort of match the Switch OLED look. So with all that out of the way, uh, in case you're not familiar with the fixture and what exactly it does, it's a unique accessory that kind of allows you to combine two of the play styles of the Switch. It allows you to use the Pro Controller that you would typically use while playing docked, you know, playing on the TV, with handheld mode by attaching the Pro Controller to the bottom here, and then the Switch tablet to the top section here. So it almost takes a form of like some of the phone mounts you might use for something like Game Pass or, you know, remote play with a PlayStation. And you can see on the interior here, you have these arrows that go into the Joy-Con rails. Of course, you're going to remove the Joy-Con before sliding the tablet into this piece. And then, yeah, this section here for the Pro Controller. And then a nice little feature that was added uh, to the final version of the Fixture S1 that wasn't there with the original prototype build are these two pass-through holes, both in the base and the upper part of the Fixture. And that will allow you to either charge your Pro Controller or the Switch tablet while you're playing, or both, I guess, if you have uh, two cords going in there. So I think that's a pretty thoughtful feature there too. And then you can also use the fixture just on its own for a sort of adjustable play stand just for the Switch tablet. It can balance just on the bottom here. It's nice and flat and there is a little rubber pad there to keep it from slipping around. And the Fixture S2 Founders Edition is currently sold out on Fixture Gaming's site. It was listed for $39.99 standalone, but you can still get this version for $59.99 if you buy it alongside this case here, which is actually something I had previously Previously, but this is a case that allows you to fold up your switch with the fixture attached. So with all that out of the way, I'm sure you're ready to see this thing in action. Got my regular pro controller here. And really you just line it up, you know, you want to center it that you can see the USB-C port through that hole there. Make sure the clips are centered over the LED lights at the bottom there. And you just click it in. Now, this has kind of always been a thing for me with the original version of the fixture as well as this one. The fit for the Pro Controller is a little tight. It's a little jarring to get it on there. It's maybe a little scary if you're worried about any damage, any scratches or scuffs on your Pro Controller. This is definitely an improvement over the original 3D printed prototype, but it's still, you know, it's still a little stiff. I do think if 
you have any sort of like special edition pro controller or one that's a favorite that has like some decals on the front, you might want to steer away from using like your favorite pro controller because I do think you'll eventually run into some scuffing along the areas where this clip comes into contact with the controller. So that's why I'm using my original basic pro controller. And now let's get the switch tablet attached to the top. I'll slide my Joy-Con off. And like I was saying in the beginning of the video, apparently the final production unit will have thinner felt pads, so it won't be such a tight fit, which this current Founders Edition here is definitely a tight fit with the tablet. But I will say, I am happy to see felt being used on a Switch accessory like this. I've reviewed tons of grips for the Switch, and a lot of those use silicone nubs on the interior, and that was actually what was used in the Fixer S1 as well. I have one right here, and I'll open it up just so you can take a look and see what I'm talking about. So here's the Fixture S1. As you can see here, we have these silicone nubs to keep the Switch tablet in place. And I understand in theory, the soft silicone is going to be better than hard plastic making contact with the tablet. But over time, that silicone almost acts like a really stiff pencil eraser. And eventually it will kind of leave these shinier streaks on the Switch tablet where it has kind of rubbed away that little bit of coating, which is certainly better than a scratch, but it is something that's still noticeable. And I do think something like felt really is the perfect solution. It's not not really going to be that abrasive, but you're still going to get that padding to keep it from making contact with the hard plastic. So hopefully the final production unit utilizes felt as well. But taking a look at the inside rails here, you can see the arrows clearly point which direction they're supposed to be attached to the switch. And it's pretty straightforward. So you just want to line your rails up at the top here, make sure everything's lined up nicely. And as you can see, it is definitely snug and honestly a little worrisome. I like keeping my newer Switch OLED in as nice shape as possible, but I have put this on before and noticed no scuffing or anything like that. But there you go. We are all attached. That's how it looks from the back. We'll get the Switch turned on here. So super simple setup really does feel great, but I do think how useful you find the fixture is really going to depend on how much you dislike the Joy-Con because that's really the big benefit here. With a grip, of course, you're able to get, you know, a similar ergonomic feeling to the Pro Controller, but the grip will not address the somewhat compromised joysticks on the Joy-Con, which are a little smaller, have, you know, less range than the Pro Controller and the buttons as well. I like the feeling of the buttons on the Pro Controller a good amount more than on the Joy-Con. So I do think seeing this thing, you'll kind of immediately know if it's for you or not. You know, if you're someone who really doesn't like the Joy-Con, but you like playing in handheld mode and you maybe gravitate toward somewhat more quote unquote hardcore games, I do think the Fixer is a really excellent option. Keep in mind if you are thinking about this for something like say Splatoon 3, if you're someone who plays with motion controls, which really is the way to play Splatoon, you know, keep in mind that of course now you'll have to be moving the screen around in handheld mode using the motion controls from the Pro Controller, which is something I don't love doing. But you know, other than that, I really can't think of any hiccups that you'll run into while using the fixture. And whenever I show this off, the immediate question I get from pretty much everyone is, oh, isn't that really heavy or, you know, pulls your hands forward with the Switch tablet sitting that way? And honestly, it really isn't. The Pro Controller makes for, you know, a perfect secure grip to hold in your hand. And because the design of the fixture really is quite thoughtful, there's a lot of adjustments that can be made to really dial in a balance in your hands that makes it kind of feel less heavy than it is, if that makes sense. When you get the like perfect balance, it's not pulling your hands in any direction and it just kind of sits there effortlessly. You do have this pivot point here at the base, which is really easy to move, but it's also pretty stiff, so it's not gonna jiggle around. And then you also have this pivot point at the top. And then beyond that, you can also adjust the height of where the fixer is on the Switch tablet. And with those three points of adjustment, like I said, you can really dial in a really comfortable balance. And I don't think there's much more to say about the fixture than that. Like I said, you can go back and check out those previous videos. 
I might get into a little bit more detail uh, with those since it was like the first time I was reviewing it. Everything to me feels just as good as with the original model, but again, now it's compatible with the Switch OLED. So if you're a Switch OLED owner and you were a big fan of the fixture and haven't been able to use it with your new OLED Switch, this is obviously going to be for you. And if you're someone who hasn't used the fixture before and this seems like a setup you'd be interested in or you really don't like the Joy-Con, I think this is a great option to go with as well. And I think that's going to do it for today. I will leave a link to the Fixture S2 down in the description if you'd like to check it out for yourself. Let me know if you have any questions about this that I didn't answer in this video. And if this is something that looks appealing to you, let me know what kind of games you're playing. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like on your way out and also consider subscribing. And until the next video, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.